Hello and welcome to the video for April the 27th for fourth grade, uh, not to be confused with April the 24th, which I tried to see the first time. Probably need to uh, pay attention to what day of the month it is. So uh, we are going to be working with angles. And so this is a part that bothers me a little bit because not this lesson, but the lesson after we're supposed to use protractors. If you do not have a protractor, do not worry. You don't need to go out and buy one. Just follow along with me on the video. I'll kind of explain um, as best I can. I will try to give you a, a resource that you can use um, inside Google Classroom. You could, if you're using your device, um, hold up the paper against your screen so that you can kind of see and just get as close as you can. Like, um, I'm not going to be like grading this for absolute perfect accuracy. I want you to understand the idea of what we're doing. Um, we didn't have enough protractors to send home with everyone. Um, and so that's why those were not included. You're not obligated to buy anything just to get a grade on this assignment. Like you guys can understand this without having to do that. Um, I'm not even going to have a protractor. I have something that kind of lets me cheat with a ruler in my whiteboard. Um, that shows me the angle that I'm drawing at. So I'm going to kind of utilize that when we get to that point. So let's take a look at what we're working with today. So um, to start with, we need to understand the idea that when we were working inside a circle, that we are going to have 360 equal parts. Now, if you think about it, we have 60 minutes on a clock. So each of those minutes would be broken into even six more smaller pieces to get up to 360. So one degree is going to be one 360th of the entire circle. And so 90 degrees would be 90 parts over 360. Uh, 180 would be 180 over 360, and that would give us a straight line that would look like this, assuming that my fingers and everything were aligned perfectly evenly. So as we go down here, what we're going to start with is figure out if we do 1 360th, that would be 1 degree. 10 of those, we would do 1 times 10 on the top. And that would give us 10 degrees. And so the distance between the spokes, it says it turns 10 360th. So we are not ever going to try to reduce this fraction. Okay. So um, if you can remember 360 degrees in a circle, and when we are working with angles, we are never going to try to reduce. You will have the uh, two most difficult things. Everything else is just technique. So um, our angle is going to be 10 degrees. Um, it works the same way as if you see degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Celsius. We can use this little tiny circle to show 10 degrees. So um, going on to uh, our share and show, we can relate fractions. So if we use our basic math fact, we can do 3 times 12 to get 36. If we put a 0 at the end of this, we would get 3 times 120 to get 360. So um, that's kind of a strategy that I've worked with you guys before um, working with uh, multiplication and powers of 10 um, in third grade. Like, for instance, 12 times 10, you can take 12 and put a zero at the end, something like that. So uh, what fraction of the circle does the angle turn? Well, uh, 120 degrees would actually that is would be, uh, yeah, it would be a third. So here would be our second one and then this. So what fraction of the circle? So it would be 112 or uh, one third. Um, tell the measure of the angle in degrees. So for this one, it would be 45 degrees. Number three, if we have one twelfth, we need to figure out how to get it into uh, parts over 360. So we can do that by multiplying by 30, because 12 times 3 gives me 36. And um, 
than if we multiplied that by 10. So we could take this and multiply it by 30, and that would give us 30 degrees. Uh, for the on your own, we are counting the entire thing, so that would be 360 degrees. This one, one tenth. So to get to 360, we can multiply 10 by 36, which means we can multiply this by 36, and that would give us a 36 degree angle. Now, the particular strategy that I just used for that with just using multiplication is going to be something that we use when we are working with changing fractions. So we're trying to change this fraction to an equivalent fraction with parts over 360, just in case I didn't explain that earlier. So I multiply this number times 36, and then I multiply this number times 36. And so we kind of worked on that earlier this year. Um, but we were using it for a slightly different purpose. So we're going to use that same kind of thing, finding equivalent fractions uh, to help us with this. But we're always looking for the fraction that is parts over 360. Um, so let's see, number seven, we would have a right angle because we have this little uh, tiny blue box that tells us that this is a 90 degree angle. So if we wanted the exact measurement, that would give us 90 degrees, but it is a right angle. Number nine, we have a straight angle because it is uh, 180 degrees. Number 11, so I dropped this from a different page so that we could take a look at this. So Alex cuts a circular pizza into eight slices. So if this is my pizza, forget everything that has to do with the clock measurements for right now. I can cut top to bottom to make two halves, then from left to right to make four quarters. Then I can go, oops, diagonally again, somewhere in between 10 and 11, uh, down to in between the four and the five, and then do the same thing this way to get eight pieces. So if I took two of those pieces away, that would be about this. So I can figure out the angle made by the missing slices of pizza by relating it back to a clock. So my pieces would be here, and so this would be one and this would be two. So this would be a 90 degree angle. All right, so for the homework, what I would like you to take a look at is you can do number 11. You could probably literally just borrow from number 11 on the previous page because that is a real life everyday example um, and then you could also use examples from a clock uh, for that so for the homework um, this one you can give the measurement um, pretty easily because we have an example of that one um, and we are just classifying the rest of the angles uh, once we get to the back they're going to ask you for how many degrees in an angle um, are in an angle that cuts one quarter of a way. So you can think back to either this one or what we did with uh, number 11 for that to be able to do that. So those are the problems for today. Go ahead and take a look at that homework. Um, it should be pretty easy for you. We're not going to ask you to use a protractor to try to measure. They've given you everything that you already need. The next lesson, we'll have to use a couple tricks to help us get through it, but we can do it. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask in your classroom. And I hope you have a great day. I will see you tomorrow.